The Swiss family Robinson is the extraordinary story of a shipwrecked family's fight to survive on a desert island. But that was fiction. This family are going to try and live the Swiss family experience for real. I was my duvet. My laptop. And my telly. Hit hard by the recession, the Dye family's days of high earning and big spending can't continue. Do we want to go back to how it was before? Or don't we actually want that back? So they've signed up for the ultimate family experiment. This is it, guys. Home for three weeks. <laughs> Leaving jobs, possessions and all creature comforts behind, they want to find out whether a back-to-basics lifestyle can make them any happier. I know I'm asking an enormous amount, but we have to get our head around the real reasons why we're here. For the next three weeks, they'll have to find a whole new way of living. They'll have to make their own camp. I don't fancy sleeping on that. Find their own food. <laughs> and learn to work as a team hundreds of miles from civilization. I don't think Andy's doing enough. It will test them to the very core. All the family said that I would be the one that would struggle the most. And they're right. I don't want to talk about it. Really. Just for shit. But if they make it through, their lives will never be the same again. The whole experience here is the Swiss family Robinson. And all of them just want to put their Nivea sun cream on and live the life without interruption. In the middle of the Pacific Ocean, a thousand miles from Australia, is a little-known cluster of islands which make up the country of Kiribati. There are hundreds of sandy beaches and coral lagoons. It's one of the most beautiful places on Earth. The Kiribati people have a simple existence, living off the fruits of the land and sea. A tropical paradise, many of its 32 islands are uninhabited. And Anna Ricky is one of them. Half a mile long and 100 metres wide, it's one of the most remote of the Kiribati Islands. And it's here that the Dai family from Essex are heading. Andy Dai and his family will be marooned on this island for the next three weeks. It's amazing. They will have to make their own shelter, catch fish and forage for food in an attempt to see what a back-to-basics life can teach them. What do you think to the island? It looks amazing. <laughs> Compared to the mud at Blakeney, you know, this is heaven, isn't yeah. it, guys? Andy is joined by his wife, Vicky, daughters, 13-year-old Courtney and 21-year-old Charlotte, and Charlotte's boyfriend, Tom. Waiting to meet them is Patriki. Hello, guys. A Kiribati local who knows everything there is to know about island survival. Hello, pleased to meet same you. Same here, same here. All right. We're here, guys. This is it, guys. Home for three weeks. <laughs> Beautiful. It really is. Absolutely stunning. stunning. Yeah. Andy has signed his family up for this challenge because he thinks their life back in Essex is at crisis point. For the past decade, the Dyes have worked round the clock to finance their luxurious lifestyle. Yeah, I've got three fridges in this house, but I probably could do with a fourth. Two ovens, um, combi oven and coffee machine. That's a fab espresso. I think everybody realistically strives for more than they've got. Vicky runs her own recruitment business. You know what I think of? Pound signs. And until recently, Andy ran a lucrative building company, which also employed Charlotte and Tom. But the recession has left Andy in serious financial trouble. He doesn't like the fact that he's let the family down. And I think he really feels that he's failed. With the building industry in its worst state for years and three of his family at risk of losing their jobs, Andy is at a crossroads. We've led our lives over the last five years at a really fast pace. The truth is our relationships turned into a business based relationship. This isn't about love. We still love each other enormously. Well, I hope that's the case. But I just feel that everything about our lives now is business-based rather than family value-based. They're not happy. They're just sitting down talking about work um, and stressed about it. So rather than trying to fix all their problems just by taking on more work, Andy has made a bold move. I think it would be an ideal opportunity to just take stock and just think about the position that we're in and to see what the next move should be. 
Do we want to go back to how it was before when we did have a lot of disposable money and we could go out and eat where we wanted to eat and we could buy the cars that we wanted to buy and we can go on three or four holidays a year? Do we want that back? Or don't we actually want that back? You know? Because the bottom line is, is that, you know, we haven't got the money that we used to have. But they won't be needing money here. On the island of Anariki, everything's free, if you know where to find it. Should we just put our bags down here and have a look yeah. where? We have everything we need on this island. We have food, we have water in the well, and we have the sea. Iripes is right under the equator, so the temperature will be more than 30 degrees and above for an Englishman to try and survive uh, in this environment, he can, as long as he uses his mind. Over the next three weeks, the Dyes will have to overcome some major hurdles, whilst learning how to become completely self-sufficient in this harsh climate. Their efforts will be judged by Patriki. OK, guys, come over here and have a look. To get them started, he's equipping them with some basic provisions, a few days' worth of tinned food, rice, eggs, fruit, plates, matches, and cooking utensils. I could make a, a rice pudding. <laughs> Plus, for Builder Andy, a rudimentary toolkit, including hammer, nails, saw, and machete. My dream, Tom. <laughs> this is like a typical male-female type role. The women are looking after the food, and the boys are looking at the tools. There are sleeping bags, a plastic tarpaulin, and an all-essential fishing kit. This is absolute Heaven, Look at that. fishing hooks, Tom. I'll come back in a few days and see how you how you're doing. Yeah. Goodbye for now and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. You. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Patriki will be back to appraise them, but for now they're completely on their own. The Dyes now have three days to get to grips with the basics. They must build a shelter, make their own fire, dig a loo and source fresh food. With just a few hours until sunset, there's no time to waste. What's the priorities now? What, 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 have, what have we got to do? Get some sort of sleeping area off of the floor. Do we think it's OK here? Um, no. It's no. the first area that we've walked onto and it no. looks lovely, but... I think we should walk up a bit, but I, I, I think we should just build something that's going to do us for tonight. Finding the right spot is one thing, but getting Andy and Vicky to agree is quite another. I just thought perhaps somewhere there. But I think we need to be quite close to where we came in, but in the shade. We've got two sides of the ocean really going, and I just, I, I know I won't sleep. What's the difference from being there to here? It is much windier over there. Look, watch my sarong here. Right, I walk over there, my sarong is going all over. What was the matter with it up there a little bit? I honestly don't care. No, well, let's have a vote and it's I just easier. Care. So that's... Three to two, you win. Come on then. Andy may have won this round, but it's early days and the pressure's on him to deliver. I can't let them down now. I'm going to build something that lasts and keep the women happy. I'm just trying to make something long enough so that the five of us can sleep in it head to toe. The only thing is the pressure, really, because it's going to be dark in an hour and a half. So, uh, and I've got one triangular piece of wood and one long bit, and that's all I've done. Building a shelter is top priority, but the girls have already started on job number two. This is pathway to a toilet. Oh, Round to a hole. <laughs> When we're all sorted and we've got a proper toilet, we're a bit bigger anyway, and a proper shelter, I think I'll be fine. At the moment, I'm hot <laughs> and tired. It's hard having the sea there and you can't go in it, but we need to get this done and we've got three weeks to go in it, so just wait until tomorrow, I think. Andy is out to impress, determined to make the women as comfortable as possible. The ladies are worried about creepy crawlies tonight. His builder's eye has spotted another use for Patriki's provisions boxes. Just makes our life a lot easier. We need to brace these. One, two, three, four. Is there a load of nails in the one you've just put down? Yeah. Little nails, honey. With the shelter almost nailed and an alfresco bathroom complete, food is the next challenge. And there's no food without fire. I'm going to try and boil some water, but I really don't know what I'm doing here. 
So I know that you need that. Andy, can you just tell me if I'm right here? I've done this. I think this is right. What do I do now? All right, that would get quite hot though, babe. What are you trying to do? Support the thing, fire thing from it? Yeah. If I'd use the string, it'll burn. Shall but I why don't you just put, put that on straight it? on the fire? Yeah, that's what I thought. Being assigned to fire duty is a first for Vicky, who's a recruitment manager back in Essex. Back home, Vicky's life couldn't be more different. Shall I tell you what comes into my mind? That. <laughs> Chloe, I'll go up to six if they'll start tomorrow. I know exactly what is going on all of the time. I hate to say I need to be in control. I'm a businesswoman at the end of the day. I need to know what's going on with my business. Work is really important to my mum. Um, she describes it as another child. She's the boss at home, too. I'll we'll tell you where the uh, kitchen implements are. Yes, yes, please, darling, if you can just point me in the right direction. Her kitchen is crammed with every modern appliance, so eating in in Essex is rather easier than cooking out in Kiribati. If I was at home now, I'd be turning my oven on. Yeah, put it all underneath. And not be doing this. Give my barbecues gas. Vicky doesn't seem to be taken to the simple life with quite as much gusto as her husband. Within three hours, I feel everything I was worrying about this morning is no longer important. No, it's a leveller. It's a real leveller in three hours. Yay! Thank God for that. Yeah, My that fire's alive. That was slightly worrying yeah. then, wasn't it? <laughs> it hasn't all been plain sailing, but by pulling together, the family are on track with food and a basic shelter. Oh, please, God. What like jump shuffle? Yes! <laughs> We're done! Nail it home! It worked! It may not be to everyone's liking. If I could have one luxury item now, it would be my bed. Because I don't fancy sleeping on that. But with night time drawing in, Vicky doesn't have much choice. Right, here we go. Oh. Today's been full of firsts. First time on the desert island, first time having to build a shelter, and first time that I've slept with Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the fact that it's like that. Okay. I wanted it like that. I think it's all right. Uh, uh, this is not normal camping. This is roughing it. <laughs> I don't really do roughing it very well, do I? Tomorrow, things get tougher. Blech. The family attempt to replenish their dwindling supplies. In all of this beautiful ocean, I haven't seen one fish. And it all becomes too much for Tom. I don't want to talk about it. Really. Just full of shit. It's day two, and the whole family are up by 6 a.m. Having covered their shelter with plastic sheeting from the provisions box during the night, it's now sweltering. It's lumpy, it's bumpy, it's hard, it's squashed, it's sweaty. It's just so difficult to sleep. Vicky's not too convinced that it gives her enough living area. I still feel stressed, and I think I will be, until the accommodation's sorted out, because that's like the boy thing and something that, you know, I feel like I should do. But Vicky's needs will have to wait. Today, it's vital that the dyes replenish their limited food supplies. I'd love to have a bacon sandwich, loads of ketchup. Um, it's a full fry up would <laughs> do me right now. <laughs> Definitely. Tom and Charlotte aren't used to roughing it. Back in Essex, they've got their own flat, courtesy of Andy and Vicky. Telly from Vicky and Andy. <laughs> My favourite appliance, the dishwasher. We got back from off holiday once and cuddled it. <laughs> They've never wanted for anything. If, if uh, my parents didn't help us out, we, don't, we wouldn't know what we would do, really. We'd be yeah, on our own. Lot. They help us with everything, with, like, even with learning to our trades. But the collapse of Andy's building firm means they could lose their jobs. Tom and Charlotte need to learn to stand on their own two feet. I've got a 19 and a 21-year-old there that have set up home. They've gone out and bought themselves the L-shaped sofas and that have got all these materialistic possessions, the things that, excuse my language, are starting to really piss me off. And is that the way they should be at that age? 
<laughs> they may have it all on a plate back at home, but being marooned on a desert island means everyone will need to pull their weight. I think rather than being dependent on this basic ration, it's up to us now to find fresh stuff. As they head inland to forage, it's a far cry from their usual Saturday supermarket run. We're looking for things that we in the Western world yep. would recognise, would recognise yeah, like exactly bananas that. and yeah. oranges and citrus fruit and things like that. It isn't long before they stumble across something that looks like it could be edible. Vic, have you seen this? Yeah. I mean, they're big boys, but there's a lot of them on this tree. Pandanus is a Kiribati delicacy, a fibrous fruit which needs boiling before eating. The locals also use it to clean their teeth. They're rock hard, and if you look at the bits that have fallen down, it looks more like a nut then, doesn't it? I'll cut one down, let's have a look at it. It's a weird looking thing, isn't it? Mm. You could eat that bit. Are you going to give it a go? It's too hard. Blech. It's got a slight melony. Does that make sense? It is it's nothing like a melon. No, it's not like no. a melon at all. They don't know it yet, but they've just dismissed one of the island's staple foods. The hunt continues until at last they spot something familiar. <gasps> lift it up, lift it up! But it's full of protein, though. It is really nice. It'd be good to put in the rice. Mm. It's OK, isn't it? Mm. I think we could use it for cooking, eating. The milk Thai, thai green curry. Coconut thai milk. green curry. <laughs> Dreaming of curries is all well and good, but this hasn't been the most fruitful of foraging trips. And there's still another 24 hours until Patriki returns. Day three, and the food situation is getting worse. We haven't got a lot left now, have we? We've got rice, more rice, more rice. It's a baking 38 degrees, and they've left what remains of their rations in the full glare of the sun. The bananas have gone mouldy. Yeah. The eggs have gone mouldy. It's a case of apple? eating what we can. When we can, we'll have a banana and an apple then. Maybe Andy's decision to use the provisions boxes to make their shelter wasn't such a good idea after all. That fly looks quite nice. Shall I eat it? That's no, fine. Well, I'll be blowed. Share it. Have a quarter each. Mm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not eating all of it, though. Put it in one and just close your eyes. And your mum will give you £5 pocket money and you can get home. 13-year-old <laughs> Courtney loves her gadgets and her football. Yeah, I know she's little, but she's up for doing anything, really. She's a bit of a tomboy girl. <laughs> but the family's troubles are even starting to affect her. The stress levels in this house have rippled into her life. And because she hasn't said a lot, probably says it all to me, that it's probably affected her more than I think it has. I think if I was going to get something out of this, I think it would be mum and dad tr sorting out their business and trying to get it back to the way it was. Tom, I'll have one if you have one. No way. Down. Overcooked eggs and sweaty fruit aren't Tom's cup of tea either. Open steak sandwich, sandwich with uh, sautéed onions mm. and onion rings. Mm. Or going around your mum's for her. Or a special roast dinner around my mum's mm. house. What, what are your mum's roast potatoes like? Oh, the best roast potatoes in the entire world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't. Thank you. Having brought the family halfway round the world for a dose of the simple life, Andy is starting to realise that the one thing they're all hankering after is the life they left behind. And this isn't about burgers and Chinese takeaways. If we can't sustain ourselves, then it will have a serious effect and impact on all of us. They may not have had much luck on land, but Andy's hoping a family fishing trip will boost morale and net them some proper nosh. We have no idea what the technique is we're using. <laughs> we just seem to be walking along quite nicely with a net. 
The Pacific is known as the larder of the Kiribati people, rich in bream and tuna, enough to feed an army, if you know how to catch it. In all of this beautiful ocean, I haven't seen one fish on our way out. It's a fish-free ocean. And the women want to be fed, look, with an expectation level. That Why don't you go deeper with it? They're useless. There's not a single fish about at the moment. No, not a fish. <laughs> It's a big disappointment. I just need food because I want to help Andy, but I just feel horrible, yeah. so I can't. I think we're so used to having loads of food and Dad thinks that we can come and kind of go straight to not having loads of everything. Yeah, he can cope with it better than Mum. I think I'm struggling the most just because I'm so hungry mm -hmm. and I don't feel good. I don't want to talk about it. Shit. Whilst Andy views the unsuccessful fishing trip as a minor setback, the rest of the family aren't feeling quite as resilient. I feel like we're suffering and we're struggling. So well, I I've, would I've have... Uh, can I finish? I would have brought some um, energy boost bars for the kids, chocolate, that type of thing, sugary things, so that they could have a night time, eat something that would revive them a bit. I would have just... I don't know, made things easier for myself. I'm, I'm sorry, but I think that's so wrong. We're not hard done by at all. I haven't eaten what I would have liked to have eaten this morning. I've got the worst bed I've ever dreamt of in my life, but I did get some sleep last night. But I just feel that we're thinking back about exactly the way that we were and are at home. I didn't come here for that. I came here for me, selfishly, to get something from this to help me change and handle life when I go back. That's why I've come here, and I think as a family, and I know I'm asking an enormous amount, but we have to get our head around the real reasons why we're here. I think that we all are traumatised to it at different levels and different times. So you just have to bear with everybody. Oh, don't cry, for God's sake. Hey, it's not worth it. But the thought is, I know, I love you loads, but the thought is, by thinking that we can just give these kids chocolate bars to make their life happier is so shallow. When we started this experience, all the family said that I would be the one that would struggle the most. And they're right. I like my comfortable lifestyle at home more than I thought I would. And at this moment in time, would I swap them? No. I think it was me that probably was the one that wanted to come more than anybody. The family were keen. I didn't talk them into it. They wanted to come, don't get me wrong. Um, but I feel as a family unit, we glossed over the surface of maybe what the hardships and exactly what the experience was going to entail. And I feel quite responsible that maybe I didn't point out some of the hardships more. It's been four days since the Dai family were dropped on their desert island. Finding fresh food has been a major issue, but they've managed to survive off the remainder of their basic rations. And today, island survival expert Patriki is back to assess their progress. Hi, Hi Patriki. Oh, come here, you good hunk. Right. First things first, there's a camp to inspect. Let's go and have a look inside. Is this a type of greenhouse? Or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how I see you. This is a sauna. Here's yeah. a sauna. Yeah. So it's thumbs down on the comfort stakes, but what about the basic structure? Is this too steep, too narrow, eh? Yeah. Yes. I would have made it a bit wider. OK. It's next to a coconut tree, it will fall on the shelter. Keep it away, especially if it's for, for sleeping or living in, eh? But for staying in here, next to a coconut tree, <laughs> I think it's a no-no, eh? <laughs> yeah. I put your lives at risk. <laughs> he might be a builder by trade, but Andy's building skills haven't measured up out here. Without further ado, Patriki sets the whole family to work. Even Vicky starts to get into the spirit of it. Oh, yes, oh, yes. yes man! <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. yeah. It's actually it's fun. fun. <laughs> yeah, just take it easy. Slow down. You are in the Pacific. Everything tends to be slow. We own the time. Time does not own us. Yeah, yeah. That is good saying, yes. actually. Good saying. Living is 
taking it easy. With the new shelter almost complete, an already famished family have worked up quite an appetite. Since arriving on the island, the Dai family's biggest failing has been sourcing fresh food. Petriki is going to give them a helping hand. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, this is uh, Peya. Peya? Peya. Hello. Hi. <laughs> He's drafted in a local woman, Beya, to show them how to prepare and cook the food once they've found it. Ready for a tour? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. definitely. OK, then show some Kiripa spirit. The key to island survival is to exploit the natural resources, starting with the food they've simply not spotted. Go for it, guys. Come on. Come on. Be like the three musketeers. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. It's no wonder they don't like it. Noni fruit is also known as vomit fruit, thanks to its pungent odour and sour, cheesy taste. Where they're going wrong? They brought their English thinking mode over. They think they're still in England. Everything is fast food, instant. They haven't taken stock of what they have here. Chili <laughs> cheese. Finding food is one thing, but knowing what to do with it is something else entirely. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks, but Vicky is determined to crack it. In your lunchbox, you'll get given a coconut now and a mini machete to open it with. <laughs> Vicky is getting more out of Bayer's mentoring than just the basic cooking skills. Actually, I like the interaction with Pyre and Treaky. It's really refreshing to see other faces. It's really important, actually, to socialise. You don't realise how... And that's really bizarre because back home, Andy and I had both done exactly the opposite. We were so busy and so stressed out, we couldn't socialise. In order to feed the family, there's one skill Andy and Tom need to master above all others, the art of netting fish. All right, there'll be two of you. You'll be... Giving the net, net out, yes, yep. and moving into a semicircle. Yep. So you're running here to try and push the fish yes, into the net. Into so the net. It's the noise of the running, yes, and this yes, is going to force the fish. Force okay. inside. Yes. Okay. But chasing fish into a net is harder than it looks. The last time Andy tried it, all he landed was grief from his wife. Fish are coming out. I can see them running out right now. Was it a fast? But by following the correct procedure, the fish take the bait. And Patriki demonstrates how to finish them off Kiribati style. Okay, give it a good bite. Crush it. In. That wasn't too bad actually. It just tasted salty. For Andy and his family, it's a major breakthrough. This is the only one that matters, the one that I bet, which yeah. is bigger than it. The boys are back to show off their bounty. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. We've got two fishermen. They are now men. <laughs> yeah. 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 After three days of busking it, the dyes are finally let in on some tricks of the local culinary trade. Starting with a dugout barbecue. It's OK. Because the scales will be on, see? Wow. Just leave this here, see? We don't have to worry about the grill falling off. falling off. When we had two pots on before, it would wobble and fall off. But now it obviously isn't going to. The seas of Kiribati have truly delivered. But still, the family are dreaming of their larder back at home. We need mayo. some salt, some mayo, some lemon, lemon some chips, chips some, some ketchup. ketchup. <laughs> Finally, they can enjoy the fruits of their labour, and not a moment too soon for Tom. Seriously, it's making my mouth water. Charlotte started on her rice. She can't, she can't wait. I'm so hungry. It's their first decent meal in four days, and the mood is considerably brighter. Oh, I'm so proud of you. We were staying. He's so fishy and disgusting that smelling. That is the first time in, like, 20 years that she's ever said that to me. <laughs> Yeah, guys, if you know what you're doing, 
This island can give you so much. It's there for you to take yeah. and use it. The following morning, thanks to their new improved shelter, the Dyes have enjoyed their first good night's sleep since leaving home. Oh, it's lovely to be able to stand up in here and sort your stuff out whilst you're in here is so much better. It's fantastic. It's such an improvement, isn't it, Charlotte, from what it was? I was fine. I slept well, actually. I was awake a couple of times in the night, but it was good. Yeah, it was comfy. But with Patriki leaving them for a whole week this time... Bye! they're going to need to raise their game. So Andy tries to build on his skills. I did get a bit carried away. Vicky takes charge. I don't think Andy's doing enough. And an uninvited guest arrives on the island. I don't go and kill a pig when I want some dinner. You don't have to kill it. I go to the supermarket. Yeah. The Dye's challenge now is to improve upon everything they've learnt and make the most of their surroundings. And Andy's doing exactly that. He's decided to give his family some of the creature comforts he knows they've been hankering after. I'm not building the chair for me, I'm building it just to obviously try and make Vicky's life a little bit more comfortable. The first thing that will happen, they sit on it and it will splay and fall apart. But I hope that won't be the case. This is the first time anyone has sat on anything but hard ground for over a week. The chair, oh, the Andy built. The chair. Oh, it's heaven. Well <laughs> done, Andy. <laughs> My chair. Well done. Andy, <laughs> we just need another pew now. <laughs> <laughs> and a table, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, the back ache instantly goes. I know. Oh, we need a sun lounger as well now. We need a footrest now, and then all you need is, like, my duvet, and I'll be well away. Can't, Tom, with the telly. <laughs> Anxious to make his wife happy, Andy raises the bar and goes one step further. All I asked for was some hooks for my mugs, but um, it kind of expanded a bit. Using wood from the island and the remains of the provisions boxes, Andy has created a bespoke kitchen, island style. I did get a bit carried away, you know, but looking at the kitchen is one thing, but looking out of your kitchen window at that is like, a, you know, that is heaven. I'm actually finding I have some time just to myself actually really nice. Not having to worry and about Andy. teams and guys and clients. That's consumed my life 24-7. Business closing, everything has just consumed so much. So to just potter around and do things, I've really, really enjoyed. But not everyone has embraced the simple life with open arms. Four of us haven't really taken this on with the inspiration that Andy has. Andy may be lapping up the laid-back life, but Vicky's carrying on as if she was still at home. OK, so, um, Andy, you're lighting the fire. Right, Tom, clothes. Sharon and I will do well water. When we're out of here, Courtney can sort this and do the day area, yeah? As their second week without Patriki continues, a new regime kicks in. I don't think Andy's doing enough in the mornings. <laughs> I love her for the rest of the day, but in the morning, she's very unreasonable. Yeah, Vicky's taken some control of all of us now. You know, we all have our little tasks, you know. It's not as bad as what she's like back home. You know, back home, we'd have an agenda to follow. But I've got to keep a close eye on it, that it doesn't get too carried away, and she gets back to the westernised Vicky just in a hot environment. The family have now been on the island for a week and a half. Everyone has their role, and Andy's is chief provider. Not catching fish isn't an option for us today. It's a bit like going out and playing football and saying, oh, well, we might lose. You don't go out there to lose. He and Tom have to fish every day to keep the family fed. And by focusing on the task in hand, their perseverance pays off.
we go back, hunter-gatherers succeeded again. <laughs> we won't tell them how panicked we were about catching them, though. <laughs> we'll make out it was really easy and, you know. <laughs> it's Kiribati spirit, Tom. So it is. It works. Yeah, well done. Well done. How many? Eight. Eight. Eight? What are they? This silver little silver bream. Oh, that's OK. But if we do them in coconut okay. milk, it's OK. Yeah. Well done, though. With yeah. that, persevered. Persevered and caught them. So, so fish. From net to plate in two hours. They may be eating better, but Vicky is still missing home. Will a glimpse of another way of life convert her? Can they do as the locals do? Local people would have a pig and kill it when they were hungry. And can they win the respect of the elders? I don't think I will ever be allowed back now. <laughs> we have pinched the bum of an elder. <laughs> <laughs> The Dye family from Essex have been on the tiny island of Anariki in the South Pacific for two weeks, having had no contact with the outside world save a couple of visits by their island guide, Patriki. And now he's back. You enjoying more of your stay now on the island? Still miss things from home, but then okay. I'm bound to, aren't I? That's yes. never going to completely go. The idea is to forget about home. Yeah. Because home is always there. It won't run away. It will be there. But the main thing is to try and reach the end and yeah. succeed. Patriki's got a plan. He's hoping a trip to see how the locals live can give Vicky a new perspective. I'm taking you guys to Nua Te. Okay. That would be so cool. What, another island? Yes. Oh, wicked. You will go and see the villages, the way they live. Yeah. That is great. Lovely. Wicked. I'm incredibly excited by it. I just want to see that sort of like family camaraderie, it's just back to those old traditional family values and just see that, because I can't remember the last time I saw that in the UK. The island of Nuatoa is the nearest tribal settlement, half an hour's boat ride away. Of the 500 people who live here, many are fishermen, earning as little as a few dollars a week. There's no electricity, no running water, just one small school, and a single shop which only sells essentials like rice and tinned vegetables. The islanders have very few possessions and what they do have are shared amongst the whole population. Hi, guys! The dyes are greeted by the village elders. Hello! Ma Mary! 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 And shown to where they'll be sleeping tonight. A snoring room! Yes! It's a chance for Andy to compare the shelter he's built with the professionals. It's not as good as our shelter. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's great what they've done, and you can see what they've done as far as weaving the leaves around branches to get each roof slat. Look how level they've got this bed. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Three weeks ago, I wouldn't have thought that this would be a comfortable bed, but at the moment, this is heaven. We should, just, we should just hire it for the rest of the time we're here. <laughs> And just stay, just yeah, stay I'm just, here. We're just thinking what the wheat rate is here. <laughs> yeah. Across the island, Tom and Courtney find another way to kick back and relax. Oh. Courtney! Ignore all the rules and just go for it! I don't think people in England realise how much they have. It's kind of made me think that I don't need everything that I have or that I want. I just kind of need what I need. <laughs> Later, the family joined Bayer. It's a chance for Andy to discover more about how the locals live. That's your cooking area. Where do you actually eat the food? Yeah, can be eating there. So where do they sleep? 
Oh, I see. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's quite funny because in a, in a funny way on the island... On Anna On, on Anna Rikis, but we've done a similar thing. Cooking area, utensil area, yeah? Mm -hmm. Sleeping area. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is very similar to this. Mm. It's good. It's really good. Look, you know it's not the same. Yeah, it's <laughs> For Vicky, observing the family's dinner preparations is something of an eye-opener. There's four, maybe five, when Tom comes round at home and I've got, you know, my two ovens and goodness knows what else. You know, they're all helping cook the dinner. I, I mean, I, I'm assuming this is what happens normally. <clears throat> Whereas I tend to cook the dinner at home. Despite the basic facilities, Bea and her family produce a meal of crab, fish and vegetables. It's a massive feast. Yeah. Yeah. Vicky will have to return the compliment and invite them to ask for dinner. Octopus. <laughs> Including a few the dyes haven't yet tasted. I'm having another sandworm. <laughs> That's what's changed. I've eaten so many things here that I would never have dreamed of eating before. Oh, that, that is good. Breadfruit. They've mm. grilled it and it tastes like roast parsnip. That is delicious. You know, it's about the closest you get to Christmas dinner. The night is young. At home, Andy and his family would normally spend the evening on their sofa watching TV. But here, the entertainment requires rather more audience participation. The following morning, as they prepare to leave, the villagers give the family a big send-off and a parting gift. Well, Uncle, we've got a pig as well. Oh, my good God. Thank you. You're going away with the pig. And whatever else they've thrown in. So... Thank you. Thank you. As they head back to Anna Ricky, Vicky begins to reflect on the visit. The riches that um, the Western world has, they don't need because they have absolutely everything that they would ever need. However, once you scrape back the surface, everybody, wherever you go in the world, still strives for more. Back on their own island, it appears that the present is unwanted. Well, Tricky, I think seeing as you've been so kind to us and taught us so much, we'd like to offer you the pig as a gift. Why do you guys don't want it? Because we wouldn't know how to humanely slaughter it, for starters. And the only purpose it would have here would be to be tied to a tree, which I just don't think is fair for the next seven days. This is just an animal. This is not a human being. It's just an animal meant to feed people. That's all. It's just like going to the supermarket. But since there's no supermarket here... Yeah, but the yeah? supermarket will humanely kill it for no. us. I no. don't go and kill a pig when I want some dinner. You don't have to kill it. I go to the supermarket. Yeah. For God's sake, everybody's thinking so westernised. It's uh, like... Uh, uh, let me get you guys back to base. We are in Kiribati. We are not in Merry England. The whole point of the experience is living the life here. Local people would have a pig tethered there and would think they would look after the pig and kill it when they were hungry. Guys, I think we're just glossing over the service, to be honest. No, I'm getting pissed off. The whole experience here is the Swiss family Robinson, and all of them just want to put their Nivea sun cream on and live the life without interruption. That isn't what this is about. Vicky's not budging. For Andy, it's a sad dawning that the family won't embrace the experience in the way he'd hoped. He decides that the pig can stay, but not for dinner. For me personally, I think it's extremely important to keep the animals here as natural food sources and to be completely all, as authentic as we can be with other occupied islands like Nuatar, where we've been. Um, that is a personal view, however, and not one that's shared by the family. It raises a lot of moral questions, really. 
It's got nice legs, though. But it has got nice legs, hasn't it, Tom? <laughs> I never thought I'd say that about a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Over the next few days, the family still struggle to see eye to eye. You moan at me absolutely anything. You're just lazy, that's why. No, you moan at me for anything. You're just lazy. No, you moan. Lazy. You moan. Lazy. You moan. And as the kids continue to behave like it's one long holiday, Andy's frustration grows. The kids do lean on us quite a bit, I think, and more so in this environment. I think with children nowadays, that they tend to find the easiest course. Mine was very much grafting, working with your parents, just mm. doing everything. Mm. And the parents forcing you to be more independent and learn different skills. And I think the kids are pretty, are still very much dependent on us. I find it really frustrating. Andy still feels Tom, Charlotte and Courtney are wedded to the easy life they had back at home. If I had no food in the fridge, it doesn't matter, he'd give it to us. If I had no money, he'd lend it to me. When they first arrived, they did find it hard to cope with the loss of their creature comforts. Dad thinks that we can come and kind of go straight to not having loads of everything. But forced to adapt, they have taken on more responsibility. We've realised that we've got to all stick together to survive on this island. Now can they rise to the challenge, put everything they've learnt to good use and prove Andy wrong? The family are now faced with the ultimate challenge. Kiribati's custom dictates that they must return the villagers' hospitality. We've got the elders, the elders coming for dinner this evening. Oh, uh, how worrying is that? With a meal for 12 to prepare for, the dyes are going to have to use every skill they've learnt to pull it off. So we're going to have to show them around and show them what we do do and all play our part in that tonight, won't we? Luckily for them, Patriki is back to help. The first thing they need is coconuts, but with none on the ground, this time they'll need to get them from the trees. No, I'm not going to take the machete with me to start off with. Andy's the first to try to climb the 20-foot tree. No, 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 I can't stretch my leg. Vicky does no better. I can't, it hurts. So it falls to Tom to try to save the day. Careful, Tom. <laughs> He's such a monkey. <laughs> Don't make him laugh. Yay! <laughs> Go, Tom! Yay! Four! <laughs> good on you. You've done extremely good, my friend. You're a man today, Tom. Inspired by Tom's haul... We've got 21 coconuts. Charlotte and Courtney knuckle down too. Oh, I think Charlotte and Courtney are both really yeah. good. Charlotte's used to it with her painting, you see. Got it, Charlotte. Well done. Patriki wants them to really push the boat out. We're in your hands, Patriki. We will get fish. It's all in the heart. Yeah, you have to believe. You have to believe. So he's taking Andy and Tom out into the deep waters where the bigger fish lurk. Our fishing today will be, will be doing like stone fishing. The name of this fishing is called tekapara. The technique involves attaching bait to a rock and then dropping it to the seabed where they hope the fish are feeding. Patriki, the expert, is the first to get a bite. Run by a rainbow runner, guys. Good, Good table fish. And pretty soon, his success rubs off on the others. Andy, my man! Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> beauty! <laughs> Andy, Hello. that's a rest. Yes! Tastes like a kidney fish. Put me in a right old mess. Yeah, yeah. nice! Yes! <laughs> Finally! The hunter-gatherers from Essex have excelled themselves. Oh, wow. Oh, they're all different, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Different. Do you think the newer times will be happy with that tonight? Well done! Andy and Tom's success at sea inspires the whole family to work together. Courtney, can you sort out the day area, please? And create a feast to make the local community proud. I've got seven already done here, and there's three here. I, I was worried about you this afternoon, because I, I, 
I know that you're good at this sort of thing, at mucking in, and I know that you love it, but I didn't know how well you were going to handle it. Oh, but cheers. No, 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 no. Uh, right at the end. <laughs> but well done. <laughs> It's the Dye's last evening on Anariki. And as a boat full of islanders arrive, the family are hoping that their efforts here will be appreciated. Hey, yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. A proud Andy is quick to show off his shelter. The problem is, <laughs> if you sit on this bit, the person that's there, they fling up. <laughs> Next, Andy invites the elders to try out his homemade benches. It's a novelty for the newer Toans who traditionally sit on the floor. It's good, you see, you've got to put your feet on there. Uh, I know. Yeah, can you feel? <laughs> I think I moved and it's pinched his bum. <laughs> so. I don't think I will ever be allowed back now. <laughs> we have pinched the bum of an elder. <laughs> With the thumbs up for the bench and shelter, what will the elders make of the feast the dyes have spent all day preparing? What are the Good, good. Dinner over, Andy and Vicky are keen to tell the elders what they've learnt from their three weeks in Kiribati. The island's been really kind to us. We've struggled to get used to living your way. It's taken us to another level, uh, and I hope that we go back enriched for the experience. We've certainly, the memories will stay with us. What it has done is made me appreciate the things that I have at home, the thing that I have taken the most out of throughout the whole time we've been here is meeting your community, which has been outstanding. As the islanders prepare to leave, Andy has a gift for them. In return for the troublesome pig, he gives them the troublesome bench. Thank you. Thank you. I'll send you another pebble <laughs> You take care. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> they're on the bench, look. They're on the bench. Look, look, dude, they're on the bench. Bye. 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 I think out of the whole experience, meeting them was the best bit. I mean, they're just so, so nice. The Dai's time on Anariki is coming to an end. They take one last walk around their island. I've got to touch it. I've got to touch it. Got to touch it. Oh, 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 beautiful. Oh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, look at that. I think that was fab for them to see that. I mean, that's amazing. When they've got children, they'll be able to understand how I feel about that. Three weeks ago, the Dye family from Essex took a journey into the complete unknown. Right. Absolutely right. stunning. From the outset, Andy embraced the simple life with rather more gusto than his family. Within three hours, I feel everything I was worrying about this morning is no longer important. His early efforts to put a roof over their heads and food in their stomachs failed to win them round. If I could have one luxury item now, it would be my bed, because I don't fancy sleeping on that. I think I'm struggling the most, just because I'm so hungry. He tried recreating the home comforts they'd left behind. Oh, <laughs> oh the back like is so totally <laughs> Although he couldn't convince them to go the whole hog with him... The whole experience here is the Swiss family Robinson, and all of them just want to put their Nivea sun cream on. They've pulled together to achieve more than they ever thought possible. Go, Tom! <laughs> Andy, my man! I think I've actually been able to relax for the first time ever. And I've been able to switch off from work, which I never, ever do. I think it's reinforced our family values that we thought we'd actually lost 
through work commitments and work-related pressures. I just don't want the work-life balance to be as it was anymore. For the first time, for as long as I can remember, actually, me and Vicky have just had conversations really about nothing, you know, and just sharing thoughts and ideas, you know, and I can't remember the last time I actually sat down and had that because our lives have been so consumed with business. Before they go, they have one last thing to do. There's the food. See you later, pig. Bye, Bye pig. Bye. The now fattened up pig is left for Patriki. Bye, -bye Ireland. Bye, Anna. Bye, Anna Riki. Guys, ready to go back to civilization? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think this, as a whole, has been a positive experience for our family. Maybe not one that most of them would want to go through again, but I would tomorrow. Back home in Essex, the Dye family are happily reunited with their creature comforts. Cleanliness, the fact that it's clean and you can just literally... Flash! Oh. This is heaven. Us girlies like our hair and our makeup and our home comforts. And I was really astounded by the fact that we got dumped on this island that had nothing. Living it was total survival, which for me was completely alien. I suppose out of all of it, I've kind of thought that I can overcome anything. It feels like a dream. It feels unbelievable. I can't believe we've done such an amazing thing. For Andy, the island experience has been life-changing. I came back and I said, Vicky, I think I've seen God, you know, while I've been away. I, I could change character. And she laughed. In the short term, he's working to pay off their debts. Time away has convinced Andy that a return to the treadmill is not for him. I don't know, I just feel like I need a different challenge. So he's mapping out a different way of life. This island caretaker job is me. I've been in the South Pacific, I've stayed on an island, I've snorkelled, I've fended for myself. Charlotte and Tom are also reaching out to a world beyond the comfort of their sofa. It's made me and Tom decide that we definitely want to go travelling and we're going to move home and save money and we're definitely going. And Vicky now realises that their time on Anariki was a lifesaver. We always said that we're strong as a couple. And we always said that, you know, it would never ruin our relationship. But looking back, if we'd have carried on the way we were... You would have done. I don't know whether we wouldn't have, whether we would have survived it. It is really different seeing mum and dad not stressed. We always thought it would be a life-changing experience. I'm just delighted that we've done it. Next week... The Busbies are parachuted into Panama. Jesus, Richard, what have we done? Can we not just go back to the hotel? Ah, shut up. <laughs> Temperatures soar. You're not doing anything. You're shouting at her, that's what. You will never let me do anything. This is what I hate. As they just can't agree. I could just spear it. No, just what? grab it and bag it. On whether the Back to Basics lifestyle is really for them. How in Christ do you expect me to kill that? More trouble in paradise with the real Swiss family Robinson next Friday at 9 on BBC One. Join me for my show tonight. My guests will be the magnificent Reese Farns, EastEnders fiancés Barbara Windsor and Larry Lamb, Kilimanjaro hero DJ Miles, plus we have great music from the lovely Peter Doherty. That's Friday night with Jonathan Ross after the news at 10.35. <laughs>